Welcome back. So we're going to talk in this video about where should entrepreneurship be taught and who should be teaching it. And here's kind of the thing. Does an entrepreneurship by definition belong or not belong in a business school? I don't, and Kevin Hindle I think agrees, I don't think it matters. Um, anywhere that you can find people who are willing to engage in vocational transcendence or the plus zone challenge is a good place to teach entrepreneurship, right? Uh, an art school could teach entrepreneurship. In fact, there was an art school that, that was across the street from me in downtown LA where they trained people to be like fashion designers and stuff and they trained them in entrepreneurship there, right? Because a fashion designer, if they want to open up their own clothing shop, needs to know how to teach entrepreneurship. Makes sense. Um, those weren't necessarily business faculty teaching it, but they had that understanding of vocational transcendence. They knew how to teach the vocational pieces of it, of entrepreneurship. They knew enough of the theory, and they taught people how to apply that stuff once they got out into the real world. Okay? Um, it can be in a business school. Um, there's one university in the United States that I know of that actually entrepreneurship is a separate um, school within the university. There's the business school, and then there's the entrepreneurship school. Um, it could be, uh, there's lots of engineering and science departments that have their own entrepreneurship courses. And that makes sense. There's no problem with that. Um, it's not that, um, you know, we as entrepreneurship faculty have a monopoly on entrepreneurship teaching. That's, that's not what I'm saying. Um, but there at least needs to be some basic threshold of knowledge in order to have an effective program. I think that is important. You can't be a... <coughs> You know, not know anything about entrepreneurship education, it, it, entrepreneurship teaching, on, entrepreneurship as a vocation, or entrepreneurship theory, and then try to be an entrepreneurship uh, faculty member, right? Um, that, that probably would be less advisable. But nonetheless, you can have entrepreneurship educators in any division of a university. And that, of course, comes up to who should really be the people teaching entrepreneurship, right? And this is where we talk about this dichotomy between pouvoir and savoir on uh, page 114. Pouvoir means power, power to do something. Savoir means to know how to do something, right? And these are fundamentally different dichotomies. And I get asked this all the time. I mean, I, I do have experience as an entrepreneur, um, but a lot of faculty that I know in entrepreneurship do not actu actually have experience as entrepreneurs or even as managers or even worker bees within a corporation. And so they get asked all the time, well, what business do you have teaching me entrepreneurship when you have no experience in the field? And, you know, fortunately, I'm at a university where we have <clears throat> people in other departments besides entrepreneurship that do have that real experience. For example, um, we have a criminology professor who was a serial killer, and he's paid his debt to society, and now he teaches other people about how serial killers behave because he once was a serial killer. We have somebody in history um, who took pictures of the moment when Brutus stabbed Julius Caesar. He was there, he saw it, and that's why he's qualified to write about that. And we also have um, several biology faculty who are very qualified to teach um, microbiology because they remember their life as a single-celled organism. Hopefully you all are paying attention and you realize that's all crap. The point is, there are people who are very successful entrepreneurs and they can't teach entrepreneurship worth a lick. Uh, again, at one of my previous employers, I mentioned in, in one of my earlier videos, this guy was a successful entrepreneur, but he was a disaster in the classroom. He didn't write syllabi, he was nasty and was a bully to students. He really was the real world entrepreneur and it was, it was a failure, right? And I, and I had to sit down and counsel him. I said, look, dude, these are not your subordinates. These are your students. You're supposed to help them grow and develop not degrade, belittle, and demean them and call them bad names and tell them that they're stupid. You can do, you can, you shouldn't. He can do that in his own firm as much as he wants. That's the real world. In the university, his job is to help these students grow and so that maybe one day they can emulate him. So he was a successful entrepreneur but a disaster in the classroom. By the same token, there are plenty of um, entrepreneurship professors who will never be entrepreneurs. Again, maybe they don't have the extrinsic factors, the intrinsic factors, the stimuli, whatever, uh, to be entrepreneurs. But they study them, and they understand what are some common traits for success and failures, and their skill set winds up being in things like facilitation, educating, research. And so they're still very qualified for what they are supposed to be doing. 
Now, ideally, and I like how Kevin Hendel says this, um, he has a bunch of questions that people get asked. There's always a question on the floor. How much shareholder value have you created in the last 18 months? Are you a millionaire? You know, if not, how do you expect to train it? I think that's um, an interesting example. And he talks about, um, later in this paper, um, who would be the ideal entrepreneurship educator. And this is on page 115. You know, there's someone who would be a lady who would be a multilingual serial entrepreneur of international prominence whose several business failures led to renewed determination and ultimate success as the leader of several highly ethical, high growth ventures of international prominence. This is a great educator. Somewhere along the line, she'd have time to complete an award-winning PhD thesis, specifically an entrepreneurship program, and in an entrepreneurship program at an acclaimed, probably American university. She'd have several years of teaching experience, not as an adjunct faculty, but a full faculty member, complemented by strong a strong publications record, exclusively in A-grade, highly focused, peer-reviewed entrepreneurship journals. Okay, the skills package would be uh, well would be rounded out by track record of successful consulting assignments and possession of a powerful media persona, and the gift of natural persuasion, particularly as it affected the attraction of uh, sponsorship and research grants. She'd be so wealthy, so public spirited, and so passionate about entrepreneurship education that a salary package would not be required, and all funds from her richly endowed chair would be directed to dispassionate entrepreneurship research. Needless to say, she'd be happily married with two beautiful children to whom she was the perfect mother. I cannot find or think of a single scholar in entrepreneurship who matches that description. If that person exists, Please comment below. I'd love to meet you. I'd love to pick your brain. I want to be just like you. The point is that that person doesn't exist. You know, research and practice are very different career paths. You know, some people cross pollinate, but that's, you know, it's not normal. It's, it's not normally done. Okay. Nonetheless, in an entrepreneurship program, students um, would benefit from adjunct faculty who have experience to give, give them uh, some kind of additional vocational train um, um, experience. Um, you know, see, uh, maybe teachers like guest lecturers. I used to do that a lot in my previous employer. I'd have guest lecturers come in and talk to the students, just tell them about their stories. And even in my current employer, we have famous entrepreneurs come to campus and speak to the students. You know, that's really powerful because it, it helps verify or refute what's working and what's not working. I think business pitches are another great example of this. You know, I teach students the best way that I can about how to do a successful business pitch. It's based on my own experience as someone who's given business pitches, my own experience based as a business pitch coach, and then also um, the research that I've conducted on business pitches. But when I have those judges in the room, it's a way for me to check whether what I'm teaching is good or not, and it's also a way for students to determine whether um, their application of my principles is going to work or not. All right? So, to sum up, you know, teaching entrepreneurship and being an entrepreneur are very different skill sets. If you're lucky, you can get somebody who has done a little bit of both, but, you know, that's not necessarily the norm or even expected. Um, but if you don't have practicing entrepreneurs in your undergraduate major or master's or PhD, ideally your university at least provides the opportunity for you to interact with local entrepreneurs so that you can kind of um, try to see if the plus zone challenge principles that you're being taught are actually relevant to the real world. Great. So in the next video, we're going to talk about who should actually become an entrepreneurship major or entrepreneurship specialist in their MBA program or get a doctorate in entrepreneurship. I'll see you in the next video.